Now what we're going to do in this part of the practical is to have a look at the spectral signatures that you can extract from the image data that we see here. So for example, given that we've been having a look at a little bit of vegetation spectral data we are through Liberty and through the spectral library in, in um, Envy here, we might have a, have a look at some vegetation in and around the Darwin region. So here's some areas where I know that we've got some quite dense vegetation and some mangroves. And what I'm going to do is have a look at the spectral profile for this particular pixel that you can see um, within the zoom window here. So if I'm to click, if I right click uh, within my zoom window or image window, it doesn't matter, go up to Z profile and spectrum, which is exactly what we did last week. Okay, so we're looking at the spectral profile that you see here. And the idea is to look at the amount of detail that you can extract from this Landsat data, given that it's got seven bands here, so bands, sorry, six bands, bands one through five plus seven, um, compared to the amount of information that you'll actually be able to see from either the Liberty simulations or through the spectral library that was available from the USGS. So if you have a look again at, um, if we bring up the spectral, the spectral library viewer, this particular one, the idea here is to compare and contrast what you see as a spectral profile here and the number of data points essentially that are able to be contained within that type of library um, compared with the profile from the Landsat data. So bearing in mind the Landsat data is only six bands, um, whereas this uh, this spectral library has, um, I'm not sure, but there's a couple of hundred bands in there. We can have a look at that later as well. So have a, have a bit of a look at a couple of different vegetation features and observe the way the plot changes and the amount of detail that you can get. This sort of, with the Landsat data, this is what we call multispectral imagery. But when we have a lot, a much larger number of spectral bands able to give us this, this sort of profile here within the spectral library or Liberty, this is what we call hyperspectral data, meaning that there's a lot more information spectrally in those data sets.